All right, Shalom Israel. Once again, it's the Brother Kalab here to the Spirit to bring another video. But before I get started, I want to give all honor and glory to my power, which is Yahweh, Ka'ala, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakadash. And I just wanted to speak in the Spirit in regards to um, how our people, you know, they want to be in captivity. They want they want to trust in oppression. But, um, but according to the Scriptures, the Heavenly Father is getting ready to break that yoke of bondage and release release those but those that are that are not willing to submit to the heavenly father they're not willing to depart from their oppressor um from their master esau edom yahabba shimashai is going to destroy through the spirit so i'm going to speak uh grab some scriptures and speak in the spirit i have isaiah chapter 20 I so like have Isaiah chapter 10 and 20 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more stay upon him that smote him, but shall stay upon the Ottawan, the Holy One of Israel in truth. And that's what our people are not willing, willing to do. We're going to stay upon the Heavenly Father in truth, not under our pressure, our pressure not under um, this wickedness, perverse uh, rulership that he that he has our people subject to. We're going to stay under the Holy One of Israel in righteousness. And the scriptures prescribe us to arise and depart. We're supposed to be getting spiritually ready for this. Micah chapter 2 and 10 says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with the sore destruction. So... That's what the scriptures prescribe for us to spiritually depart from this place. But our people trust in oppression and they're not willing, uh, you know, willing to hearken into the words of the Heavenly Father. That's why the strength of Pharaoh is going to be their confusion when this economy collapses, when this system, when this false sense of security is done away with. That's going to be their shame. OK, this fall, uh, this these comforts, these amenities is getting ready to be stripped away. Isaiah chapter 30 and three says, therefore, shall, there, therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. And that's our people that are joined hand in hand. And that's the scripture as well. Uh, our people are joined hand in hand into the heathen. They're joined in hand in hand to the oppressor Esau, Edom, the so-called women. And they do not want to depart. Isaiah chapter 30 and three says, therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. You know, that's our people to the spirit. But how about Shema is going to cut those people that do not want to depart spiritually from the wicked oppressor. And also, he's going to destroy the wicked of the world, which is Esau, Edom. Psalms chapter, Psalms chapter 37 and 9 says, For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Ottawa shall inherit the earth. That's what, that's what we have uh, waiting for us. Verse 10 says, For yet a little while the wicked shall not be. Ye, thou shalt diligently, thou shalt diligently consider its place, and it shall not be. And this is and this is uh, ultimately we're in a spiritual battle. As you see things, just to speak on it, um, the, the perverseness, the spiritual uh, wickedness uh, in high places that we're up against for a wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities in high places. That's why these see, we see this demon ex exalting himself in wickedness against against who? Moreover, the elect. So this is what this battle th it is just quoting this to the spirit, but um, it's giving me um, it's giving me um, uh, relevant to relevance to speak on Psalms chapter thirty seven because the meek is a, the is a, for our righteousness we're the meek right the elect is going to inherit the earth Psalms thirty seven eleven says but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace because the scriptures also say um, according to his promise and we seek new heavens that dwell with righteousness that's the mindset of the elect. Verse 12 says the wicked, and this is we see uh, on the other on the other hand, the contrary, the wicked, you know, they're plotting against their they they don't seek a heavens uh, that dwell with righteousness. They seek heavens that dwell with, with wickedness. And how about Shemeshai is going to cut them off for all this iniquity. Psalms chapter 37 and 13 says the other one shall laugh at him. So like you, Psalms 37 and 12 says the wicked plot against the just and gnash it upon him with his teeth. Verse 13 says, The Ottawan shall laugh at him, for he seeth his day coming. And this is Esau, Edom, he, the so called women. He sees his demise coming. He sees the end of a rulership. He sees the end of his dominion. That's why, that's why it says, 
it says uh, because he knows that he has but a short time, you know, uh, uh, he's going to try to, alter, you know, he has to come in. Uh, let me grab that to the spirit. He knoweth, he knoweth that he has a short time, KJV, just to back that up. It says, therefore rejoice ye heavens, and of course that's done with the remnant of the elect, and ye thou dwell in them, woe to the habitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devils come unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And that's ultimately that spiritual wickedness, and ultimately he is physically going to try to come after us because he's going to rely on that sword. But Yahabashim Al Shai shall laugh at him and have him in derision. And he sees this day approaching. That's why he's moving fast through the spirit. Psalms chapter 37 says, 37 and 12 says, The wicked plot against the just and gnashed upon him with his teeth. The other one shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Esau knows his end is near. Okay, that's why he's moving in like a, like a mighty flood. Verse 14 says, The wicked have drawn out their sword and have bent their bows to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. And that's ultimately speaking of us. The, you know, on, on the left half side, you have the that perverseness of Esau. But on the right half side, you have the elect that have that upright conversation. It says, and no God was found in their mouth. That's to the spirit. That's the elect. Verse 15 says, their sword shall enter into their own heart and their and their bows shall be broken. And so, so this devil, you know, Yahweh Bashim Bashai is getting ready to destroy this devil along with our people that have the spirit on them. Isaiah chapter 30 and 3 says, Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Unfortunately, that's going into Esau, Edom. That strength, that mighty strength of Egypt, America, Babylon the Great, and the rulers thereof. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Our people are going to be confused because they trust in oppression. Let me see. Let's see if there's anything more. Isaiah chapter 30 and 9 says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the other one, which say in this which say to the seers, see, you know, the prophets, see not and to the prophets, prophesy unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. It says, Get ye out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the holy one Israel to cease from before us. That's that mindset of our of the wickedness of our people that have adopted that spirit of Esau Edom, that arrogancy. But Yahweh Shem is going to disappoint these people and put that shame on our people for walking in the ways thereof of uh, the heathen and these goddamn devils. Job chapter 5 and 12 says, He disappointed the device of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Yahweh Shem is going to put a wrench in these devils' plans to the spirit. Let me see if there's anything more. He taketh the wise in their own counsel. And the council of the four is carried headlong. Ultimately, those uh, upper echelon elite, these Rothschilds, DuPonts, Merovinches, these small hats, I think they're running something. Well, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to have these goddamn devils, you know, uh, in derision. They're going to be uh, confounded very shortly. Joe chapter four, 5 and 14, they meet in darkness and in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. But he saves the poor from the sword, from the mouth and the hand of the mighty, so the poor have hope, and iniquity stoopeth her mouth. Yup, yup, Yahweh Hashem is going to cause that pride of the areas he sees, and he's going to lay low that haughtiness. And to this preaching of this gospel, this preaching, pre preaching of this truth, uh, this the word searches out uh, the inward thoughts. You know, we're exposing this devil to the spirit. Hey, we're putting out that light of the wicked. Yahweh Shemesh teaches our hands to war in, in, in righteousness. Why? Because we because we re, we wrestle with not flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and principalities in high places. I might have put you that one, but y'all y'all understand we're fighting against this spiritual demon. And to the spirit, we're gonna keep pushing until until ultimately Yahweh Shemesh comes and justifies us and and um, and avenges us. Joe chapter eighteen and five says, "Ye." The light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not rise. The light shall be darkened in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. 
Verse 8 says, For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he shall walk of, walk of the snare. There's another beautiful one that says, it says, The hands of the wicked shall come upon him. That's ultimately going into the elect. Once, you know, Yahweh is once this devil comes in like a flood, because he's ultimately going to come in once he sees these things that we're speaking is true. He's going to try to take this into his own hands and subdue the men of the and men of men of the Lord. But Yahweh is going to grant uh, through the Spirit uh, his remnant, his chosen spiritual powers, and they're going to really fear. That's when that fear is going to overtake them. Isaiah chapter fifty nine nineteen says, "So so shall they fear the name of the Adawan from the west and his glory for the rising of the sun, when the enemy should come in like a flood." Speaking of Esau, Edom, Edom, the devil. So called white man says the spirit of the Adawan shall lift up a standard against him. Y'all about Shimon Shai's gonna put that spirit, you know. We're gonna be like our ancient forefathers, David. Alright. Jeremiah chapter 16 and 16 says, Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Adawan. This is when we get that power. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Adawan. They shall fish them. You know, right now we're fishers, you know, as going out on the highways and Bibles, fishing for the leg. It says, and after will I send for many hunters. These going to be fishers turned hunters. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from the mountains. These, these, these wicked, starting with these Edomites, right? And from every hill out of the holes of the rocks. Why? Because they're going to flee into their bunkers. They're going to flee into those those caves. And But Yahweh Shema Shah, he's going to turn his remnant, his men, into hunters, and guess what? Y'all uh, to the spirit, y'all by Shimon is going to put down these devils to the men, to the men uh, of the Heavenly Father. Isaiah chapter 14 21 says, Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of the fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face for the for, nor fill the face of the world full of cities. For I rise up against them, saith thou don't host, and cut off from Balaam the name and the remnant and the son and the nephew, saith thou don't Yahweh Shem is going to cut this devil off. His whole seed line, his whole memory is going to be yet yeah, but a, but of but of a mere existence that's going to fade away. Yahweh Shem is going to really lay these devils down. And through that, Along with our people, right? As well, Isaiah chapter 13, 11 says, And I will punish the world for the evil and the wicked for their iniquity, right? Esau, Edom. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haunting of the terrible. Now, about Shimon Shines, lay these devils down. And that's why these, these devils are, um, you know, he shall not feel quietness in his belly. Okay? You know, this goddamn devil, he, he he's... Uh, he, he's, he can't get no rest because he knows that the Heavenly Father is on his ass. Isaiah chapter 30 and 12 says, Wherefore thus, wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because he despised the word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Verse 13, Therefore this iniquity shall be as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in the high, high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly and in an instant. Y'all about you know, going to break this place. Just to, just to, just because of your wickedness, and to show his power, you know, to the spirit, because he's he's written it to the spirit. Check this out. Second, this then it gives you the reason why. Of only because we're under the rulership of the wicked, and our people have taken the ways of these devils, and that wickedness has has been fulfilled. Second Ezra chapter 15 and 6 says, For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and the hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore saith the other one, I will hold my tongue no more, as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit, you know, these Edomites, along with our people, neither will I suffer them in those things, and the heathen in which they, because the whole, the whole earth is, uh, Drunk under the inhabitants thereof, the drunk on that Babylonian juice, which is wickedness. I will hold my tongue no more. As touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. It says, Behold, the innocent and the righteous blood cry unto me, and the souls of the just complain continuously through the Spirit. That's us, you know, like just lot vexed with the filthy conversation. That's us to the spirit. We're vexed with this this uh, wicked ass world, and Yahweh Shem is going to justify us and avenge us. Verse nine says, "And therefore, saith out of one, I will surely avenge them, right, and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them." 
Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will, I will, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and I will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon it. That's <laughs> yeah, that's that judgment, man. And Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to have these people fucking confused out here. They, didn't, they, they had a stiff neck towards the Heavenly Father and the men of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 30 and 3 says, Therefore, and they guess what? And they trust in, in America. They trust in wickedness. They trust in oppression. So Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to put that shame on these goddamn two wicked two thirds of our people. Isaiah chapter 33, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in Egypt and the trust in Egypt and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion to the spirit. And this is what, you know, you must do to avoid that lot, to avoid that judgment. Michael chapter 2 and 10, arise here in the poor, for this is not your rest because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with the sword of destruction. All right. You have to, you have to get... You have to get yourself out of this place, you know, spiritually, because we understand the heavy judgment that Yahweh you know, Shemashah is getting ready to render. I'm going to leave it there, you know. Uh, hopefully this was edifying, and uh, I was able to expound on the judgment the Heavenly Father has prepared for uh, those that walk uh, hand in hand with Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, and ultimately these Edomites that have a, a very big tab to pay to the Spirit. So with that, I'm going to give all honor and glory to my power, which is Yahweh. Ka'ala, Ba'ashem, Ya'o Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakadash, Ba'ashem, Ya'o Shai, Shalom, until next time.